Today I wanted to do a quick breakdown of this particular shot here. It's all made inside Blender, and so I just kind of wanted to give you a behind the scenes look on how I threw it together. So this is the blend file here, and immediately you'll notice I have two pretty big empties selected, and these guys kind of have almost everything in the scene parented to them. For this one, it's animated along the Y axis, and this one, it's just kind of rotating throughout the shot, and the dirigible is parented to this square one. I have control of all the tiny little parts because there are a bunch of little parts for that. And the spherical one is to help it look like the scene is moving forward. So the camera is parented to that and the ocean is parented to that. And that just makes it look like this dirigible is flying into frame. So let's actually start with the environment for this scene because it was a pretty big factor. So first of all, the ocean was actually fairly simple. I'll show you some settings here. So we've got a couple of repetitions. You can see it's mostly square and then duplicated actually on the X and Y axis a couple of times. And I've got it just so that the farthest away part kind of stretches off camera, just so it looks kind of endless, although it certainly isn't. And I've also got the waves looking kind of huge. And we've got plenty of resolution just to make it look really nice and detailed. Now, the animated value I have here is the time. If we select this, I've set it to, if you just go pound and then frame, I've also divided it by 24. So it'll take the frame number and then divide that by 24 just to slow it down a little bit. And so that makes it so this time element is just constantly increasing throughout the shot, just so it looks like it's animated the whole time, which is super nice. You can see all my settings here. I don't really remember what I did for them. I do remember checking foam, however, and so we've got a data layer that says foam here. And so this data actually ended up making it into the material for the ocean, which I have here. It's fairly simple. A lot of it is actually going right into the bump map. So we have a fairly low detail noise texture and a fairly high detail noise texture. And I've taken an attribute node. And I've got that foam information just going into a color ramp that isn't really doing anything, but it can be useful for fine control. And that's mixing the high detail noise with the low detail noise. This high detail area is where the foam was generated. And that's kind of all foam really is. It's just really bumpy water. That mix goes into a bump and that goes right into the height, which goes right into the normal of our principal node here. Now there's a little bit of node magic here for making certain parts transparent and making it look a little bit more like water but then you've also got all of this information. I've turned the roughness all the way down and I think pretty much everything else is default except for the base color. So it's very much a hack and a lot of it is just reflecting the sky, which kind of sells the effect. So speaking of the sky, I'll jump to the HDRI. It's from HDRI Haven, which is a really nice spot to get skies from. And it's just this beautiful kind of golden hour with a bit of a storm. And then you can see the ground is probably digitally altered on their part, but it's nice and shiny, kind of looks like an ocean. So having a nice sky to reflect in your water is a pretty big part of the equation. Now I've also added some volumetrics and it's a little bit difficult to see. Let's go into solid mode. Here we go. This big guy adds a little bit of depth to the scene. If I select it and find the nodes here, you can see it's super simple. It's just a cube with a little bit of emission going into a volume. I did have a volume scatter going on, but that was just taking a long time to render and I was impatient. So I just threw this in and that was a pretty quick way of achieving a fairly similar result. Now you'll notice I also have this dark cloud out here on the ocean, which is a little bit mathy. I think CG Matter has a tutorial that I followed for the, the math of figuring this out. It's basically a bunch of parameters saying where you don't want the clouds to be. And then that just goes right into the density of a principled volume. I really didn't use a whole lot of this type of thing for clouds because once again, it takes a really long time for my computer to calculate where the light goes through them. And so what I spent a lot of time working on was these two dimensional clouds. There's a couple image textures I used of just really dark stormy looking clouds. So you can see the image texture is going right into the translucent here. And then there's a whole bunch of math nodes. You can see the white part feeds into a mix node that just makes it transparent. So I'm just kind of fading out where I don't want the image to appear. And it looks a little bit wonky when it's all out of perspective like this, but from the camera view, it kind of looks like a nice big storm. Okay, so that's all of the environment that this blimp is inside. Now this guy took me a little while to make. A lot of it was kit bashing, and 
actually, if you look at this model, I was trying to make it look like it wasn't CG because this really flat panel look is kind of a digital look to it. But looking at reference, I saw that you actually kind of get that look when you're looking at real dirigibles. So I was going into depth to see if I could add more like kind of ribs to that or what I could do to make it look a little bit less digital. And so I ended up in setting a lot of the faces just to add a little bit more resolution to them. And I put a lot of work in on the shader, which you can see here. And a lot of that is to get kind of animated noise textures to ripple along the sides of it. Just kind of a big overview of this. But you can see we've got lots of kind of grungy textures and then we've got all of those animated textures. Okay, yeah, so that's these noise textures that are just kind of rippling along the skin just to make it look like there's a wind and I ended up mixing that with some kind of pointiness nodes and a little bit more of a cloth texture just to get more of that rib detail. You can see close up it looks a little bit more clothy. The wrinkles didn't end up super prominent. Kind of wanted to avoid doing too much to that. So this is kind of what it ended up looking like. Now you can see there's several other elements. We've got the kind of gondola thingy in here which I spent a bit of time kind of modeling from scratch and then I just threw kit bash details all over. You can see we've got our little skeleton guy piloting it. And then I also put in some detail on the ends here. Once again, more kit bashing. A lot of what I ended up doing for the frame of things was in edit mode, I would just have this boxy chunky detail that I triangulated and then set the wireframe modifier and that's also mirrored. So it just ends up looking kind of like this truss element, which actually is inside it as well because I kept wanting to get away from that look of it being just a really smooth CG object. So when you look into the light, you can actually see through the transparent skin, it's under skeleton. And actually this is one of my favorite views from inside of it. And I kept trying to think of how I could find like a nice composition inside of here and put that inside the animation. But in the end, that didn't really end up happening. So yeah, that's a lot of what went into the blimp. Okay, quick edit. That's the second time I used blimp instead of zeppelin or dirigible. Dirigibles and airships are steerable craft that are lifted with gas, I believe. The difference between a zeppelin and a blimp is how they're structured. So a zeppelin has an interior frame that holds its shape together, while a blimp's shape is held together by the pressure of the gas inside. So while it's fine to either call a blimp or a zeppelin a dirigible, it is not fine to call a zeppelin a blimp, which is what I just did. <laughs> Everything, once again, is parented to this empty so that it can all rotate together. Now moving on to the kind of rendering side of things, you can see for the camera, I did add a little bit of that nice out car window camera shakeify, and I've got a tutorial for that that I can link in the description. Wonderful add-on, adds a lot of realism to a scene. I ran into another problem once I got the clouds working, and that problem was that all the detail that I put into the under skeleton really wasn't showing up, and so, in the background here, when it comes to lighting, you can see there's this really gnarly point lamp, which just kind of streaks across the scene, and that is actually lightning. So you can see it's keyframed here to start moving along, and it goes up to 1.5 megawatts, I think is how much that is, which is absolutely ridiculously bright. Oh, it goes up to three megawatts. It's really lighting up the clouds and the scene, even a tiny bit of the interior skeleton of the dirigible. Now, since the cloud shader was all set to transparent, a lot of that light was kind of shining through the clouds and bouncing around. So that ended up also giving a lot of depth to the scene, which I was pretty happy with. Now, the final crazy lighting trick that I put in was actually inside of the dirigible. You can see towards the end, there are all these point lamps inside, which just got once again, pretty ridiculously bright. Part of this was to kind of show off the interior skeleton that I had for the ship. And another part was kind of the, the homage to the Hindenburg blowing up, which is horrible, but also looks really cool. So I went ahead and animated these point lamps. You can see those are getting pretty intensely bright. And also I've turned up the radius there. And that just kind of has this nice fireball-y gas effect from the outside of the transparent skin. Now the final part of the scene that I'd like to share is a couple of elements here that I put in. You can see on the smoke layer, there's quite a bit coming up from the top and a little bit drifting down from the bottom. And if we take a look in material preview mode, we've got the top one 
kind of spewing black smoke from the top as if there's like a fire about to happen. And then along the bottom, it's a little bit difficult to see, but it's actually kind of supposed to look like ballast being emptied out, which is like how dirigibles lift as they take on a bunch of water at the start of the voyage and then by dropping it they can go up higher. But yeah, those are the final two elements. If you want to get your hands on a pack of elements like these, there's actually a free pack of those that I'm offering and there's a link in the description for that. But yeah, I'd say that's pretty much. <laughs>